What's good, everybody? Donnie B got the beats here on the beat. Let's get right to it. So I have the pleasure. But let's, you, know, you guys know how I do. I got to give the backstory first in order for me to give the appropriate introduction for this talent that I bring on this show. You come on this show, there's always a story, right? So if you didn't know, I'm an HBCU person. Come on. I'm an, I'm, I'm an alum of a glorious institution the hu the HU. not not an hu right not the other hu right the hu the hu i'm also a member of at the hu the marching force okay marching force. this pro this prestigious program is one of the greatest marching programs that there is in the country period hands down especially in the era in which we were in Okay. Okay. So this young lady here was very pivotal to my inspiration of and aspirations of becoming the best person I could be in that field. Okay. Always held me down, was always 100 with me, steered me in the right direction, gave me the best advice whatsoever. Oh, just never had an issue with her, but I was always in awe of her musicality, Aww. her technicality. And just her overall social awareness, how she was just always, everybody loved Tiffany. No. Everybody loved Tiffany. Everybody did. Like, it's just, you know, it's facts. And so leaving leaving Hampton, going on about my business in life, you know, I always kind of do my homework and, and stay, you know, watching. I don't ever, you know, always keep in contact, but I always watch. And this lady has always been moving forward, and I've always respected her from it. Uh, for it, and definitely one of the uh, one of the, the 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 people I needed to get on this show once I decided to create the beat. So, without further ado, let's go read this out. Musician, TV and film music composer and producer, mm -hmm. ethnomusicologist, and we will get into that one later on. Yes, actress. Yes, Tiffany Good. Come on. All right, come on, Tiffany. Ah, Good. That's crazy to hear. <laughs> hey, 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 look, look, <laughs> it's amazing. And thank you, first of all, like I said, for joining the show. I really appreciate it, and I meant everything I said in 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 the, in the lead up going to it. How are you doing, first of all? I am doing well. I'm doing very well, actually. How are you? I'm always good, even when I'm bad. Oh, come on. Okay. Hey, that's man. I, right. That's what I live by. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> So, so T good. Tell you, tell them, you, you from, you from the A, right? I'm well, from you Richmond. From the A. Yeah, you I live in A. I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Okay, you go know rich town. Mm -hmm. They don't know about the roads. Yeah. <laughs> about the VA life, right? All right, all right. So, uh, how long have you been in in A town? I've been in Atlanta since 2000, though. So, you know, pretty much in Georgia Peach now. 20 years in. All right, yeah, all right. I claim it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. And, and you're loving life down there in Atlanta, I, I presume? Yeah. You know, what's funny. I, when I moved here in 2000, I, I moved here directly from Hampton, not from going to school. I lived in Hampton after we graduated for some time and moved directly to Atlanta from when I left the Hampton area. Mm -hmm. And I really thought, you know, I'm going to do this for about three years, you know what I'm saying? Stepping stone type of move. And then, you know, I'll end up, you know, somewhere else. And you know, twenty years later, I must like it. But yeah, yeah, so it's, been, it's been good. It's been good to me. I can't be mad. Atlanta gives you a big city feel on a 
small city budget. That's what I like about Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But don't, okay. But don't come here, y'all. <laughs> yeah. We have enough people. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say, it seems pretty congested. I know I, I tried oh to do it uh, like almost a decade ago. Yeah, it was a decade. No, I take that back. A little over a decade ago. And it was it was a lot of people then. So I can a only A lot imagine. of people then. They still coming, Lord. COVID, <laughs> no COVID. They here. I'm like, okay, then. <laughs> well, you know, and people, you know, some some people out in LA call Atlanta Atlanta Wood because you know all of the stuff that's going on with with the movies and stuff out there now. Facts. <laughs> so much going on from a movie standpoint now. I mean, Atlanta Wood is about right. Like there's so much happening. Um, I mean, that's how I even when we get into the acting part, that's how I even ended up doing any acting. That's not my you know forte. I wasn't mm. expecting to be doing any. On anybody's screen, okay? okay. So, being on a, I was like, okay, go Atlanta. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Ain't even matter. Hold on. First of all, we gotta ask because you know you sip yours. I'm sipping mine. What you sipping on? I'm sipping on green juice. So, uh, okay. one of the things that's happened over this last uh, eight months of COVID, actually, is I've become vegan. Okay. Okay. And so, green juice is one of my things that I have daily, which is you know this green juice has. Kale, celery, green apples, uh, cucumbers, um, ginger, mm, and some oranges. I get it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's good. So. No, I ain't never look. Hey, hey can't not hustle. Not me on the other hand. This is this grown man who's uh, vitamin water, but it's not really vitamin water. I'm just saying. <laughs> we gonna leave that. <laughs> we gonna leave that over there to the side. You know. No, no, no. Do it. <laughs> Don't leave that over to sit. Oh, no, 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 no. Trust me, we're going to get it in. I'm just saying, okay. we right. need it's, mine's not as interesting as yours. You know okay. what I'm saying? I don't know. I, I think yours may be interesting. <laughs> it ain't Pirate Punch, though. You know, but they're they on. Lord. You could throw it away. The nice of Pirate Punch. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Woo, Lord. So, we're going to move forward real quick, Tiff. So, okay. who is Tiffany Good? Like, what is your backstory? Like, you know, from the, from the days of being in, you know, Richmond and coming up and, you know, going to Hampton Roads. Like, I've only, you know, known you from the Hampton Roads era. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, from the Hampton University era. Mm -hmm. um, what put you on the path that you're in, in to be, to, 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 to have all of the accolades that you have? Mm -hmm. um, and then from, from Hampton on, what brought you to where you are now? Can you expound upon that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, I think growing up, uh, I've always had a family that was not necessarily entertainment driven, but they, you know, they were lively. Okay. Um, and my mom was always, you know, I was like the little sunshine, like go out there and do that thing, Tiffany, that you do. You know what I mean? So that started probably when I was a kid and even, you know, young, young, you know, uh, I was part of the church choir and all that good stuff growing up, very active there. But then going, um, the summer from my second grade into my third grade year, um, my dad brought a trumpet home. So, and how that occurred was um, in the local neighborhood, there existed what we call a um, the local kind of uh, liquor house, right? Okay. On down the block where my dad would frequent. And in the liquor house, if you know about it, um, there are all kinds of things that happen. They play cards, they play, you know, um, all kinds of, you know, whatever, you know, dominoes, bones, whatever. Right. They drink, they talk a lot of stuff, but they barter. Another thing they do is they barter. Okay. So it's nothing for my dad to come home with some steaks and some television or whatever. This particular day, he came home with a trumpet. And he came in and he said, you know, hey, held it up. Hey, who going to play this trumpet? You know, <laughs> And I was like, I'm going to play it, daddy. John gets everything. John is my older brother. John didn't want it anyway. So John was excited that I stepped up. And um, and that's where it kind of began. So then my mom was like, well, if you take this trumpet, then you're going to play it. Like, you're going to play it all the way through high school. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's fine. So um, you're not supposed to play trumpet until the fourth grade or enter the band into the fourth grade at my elementary school. But my mom was cute. She batted an eye. The principal was like... Tiffany can join. So third grade. Now this down. So you appreciate this. <laughs> okay. So this trumpet was beat up. I mean, but my dad had no idea. It was beat up. It had a cornet mouthpiece in it. It was frozen in it because who knows where this thing has been. 
I can't even believe I put my lips on this thing. And now thinking about it now, right? right. Uh, all the vows were frozen. All the slides were frozen. I mean, I don't know where this man pulled this trumpet out from. Um, they gave it to my dad, but we was excited. My mom put it in a brown paper bag. We round, we, we dig on the, curled the top up. She handed it to me and off I went. I went to school and that's how it started. Mr. Jackson was my first band teacher and he looked at me and Lord and was like, what is happening here? Took that trumpet, gave me a mouthpiece. We started our journey. So that's how it all started. So fast forward, I did pretty well in playing. You know, I started getting accolades, started doing all city stuff, all that good stuff that you do when you're doing band. And mm. Um, went on to middle school, tried to put it down because my mom shipped me from north, from south side to north side schools. And I didn't want to be the odd girl playing the trumpet already feeling weird. Nonetheless, <laughs> mom, I came home and was like, mom, I can't get trumpet on my, can't get banned on my schedule. She was like, okay, then listen, either you go get banned on your schedule or I'll go get banned on your schedule tomorrow. All right. Said, okay. I got you. So I got banned on my schedule, kept it on there. So around my seventh grade, eighth grade year, my mentor, who became my mentor, um, was the high school band director, which was next door to my middle school. He came over and saw me, which he would frequently do, come down to see who's the talent coming up towards the high school. Okay. And so he asked me then, I want you to come start playing with our marching band. Okay. Um, and he started taking me under his wing. Now he, he took, always took a trumpet player on his wing cause he's a trumpet player. Dope. Well, he was a guy, you know, rest his soul. He's he like a father figure to me. And I, I never pick up a trumpet and don't think about him or pay homage to him. Um, but, uh, but so he always took a trumpet player underneath. Actually, Michael Branch, who was in the band with us too, was one of his, um, was one of his mentees as well. Okay. He went to my high school as well. So, um, but he was older than me. So I never played with Mike in high school. I only played with him in, high, in college. So um, that's when my jazz band stuff really kicked in. Like I was playing jazz band and stuff then, but it was more la-di-da. Um, but then you get to him and he's a jazz player and he really did the thing. So I probably played in band four hours a day every day. Um, sixth period, seventh period, two hours after school um with him and then i started gigging around 13 years old around the city of richmond you know and weddings little gigs all this little stuff we had a little fusion band he was like our little manager and we would go around playing and all that stuff so fast forward to senior year of high school getting ready to go to hampton didn't know i was going to hampton at the time but we did a um competition at hampton count basic competition uh, with the Count Basie Orchestra, uh, were the judges. Okay. It was dope. And um, and long story short on that, let me just say my my mentor had a triple bypass surgery, and had been out of commission, had been gone for months. And we got a guy who came as a substitute teacher and taught us a lot of la di da. We went right. He came back. My mentor was like, "What happened to y'all?" Anyway, long story short, he pulled us together. And when I tell you, we got to that place, and we were known, we, we were in the papers and everything in Richmond. We, we got to, to Hampton, and we were good. But when I tell you the, the stars and the moon and everything shine on us that night, and we played everything perfectly, and we won. I won Best Soloist, and I got partial scholarship at that point to go to Hampton because, you know, they were all there. Awesome. And so that's how I got to Hampton. I went to Hampton. Um majored in music engineering technology which was a new major at the time matter of fact we me skip and all of us went and fought for that major my freshman year because they weren't going they didn't know if they were going to do that major or not so we went fought for it so met became a major and that was what my degree was in yay thank you um, <laughs> thank you because I, <laughs> I was in that major too look absolutely look yeah <laughs> i mean i was I think the second class to graduate from skipping the word first Okay. And then um, worked with Teddy for a little bit. Um, and, you know, all the time, you know, I, I played, I didn't play jazz as much at Hampton, to be honest. I played the first couple of years 
And then, you know, it's just everything. I was doing, you know, Delta. It was a lot happening. So I was like, you know, um, I um, worked with Teddy for a couple of years. Left, uh, I, then I worked in, then I, I made a transition to work in television. So then I started working in television at WVEC Channel 13 in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, Cause Kelsey got me on. Thank you, Kelsey McDonald. Hot dog. Hot dog. Hot got dog. me on at WVEC. Started there, and that's how I ended up in Atlanta because I was working in television. I started looking for like, mm, I, uh, to be honest, I, I went from making like uh, eighteen, what was it, eighteen thousand, to like eighteen thousand two hundred or something in a year. Like it was something stupid, and I was like, let me get out of here. I'm tripping. <laughs> so I was looking for jobs. I ended up taking the job at um, in Turner Broadcasting in Atlanta, Georgia. Remember that? Where I ended up working for 15 years. Still doing music, still producing, doing music for film and television at that point. Doing a lot of back scene stuff. But it was more of a side hustle than a like my main thing. I was going to work from nine to five. You know, part of my story now is, you know, the beauty and not and this being my main hustle and not my side hustle anymore um so i did that and um left there in about five years ago and music became my main hustle um from there i have been doing music the whole time i always had a little studio in my house I've always been doing music the whole entire time and um from there I, I i just it just became my main thing i was still just working on stuff and blah blah so how the album came out, how I got to hear to my album. So I have an album out called Today Was a Good Day. And um, it's been number one on Bandcamp in Atlanta for the last 32 weeks for modern jazz. Ooh. Yeah, crazy, right? And, um, uh, you know, doing really, really well. It, it topped at number four for uh, modern jazz, period, out of South of Atlanta, number 10 for all jazz on Bandcamp. So it did really well. So it's still doing very well. Amen. And uh, COVID hit, mm. and I was like, okay, I don't know what, you know, okay, this is going to be interesting, right? My job stopped, and um, my brother was like, you should really release your album. And, you know, it was him saying my album that made me even, even realize I had an album, like really think of it in that manner. I, I had did some songs that I listened to and enjoyed, but I was like, all right. So Bandcamp offered a, um, you know, release on this day. They, matter of fact, they have another one coming up this Friday. Release your material on this day, on this Friday, and we won't take any cuts from it. All your money is yours. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I said, well, I'll, I'll do a single. I had been working on the song. Actually, it was one of the last songs I did, and it was um, inspired by Miles Davis called Forward Movement. And um, Miles Davis is all blues specifically. And um, I said, I'm going to do that one. And I put it out and I turned off my social media and I took a walk because I was like, I don't want to know what people are going to say. <laughs> but it was received really, really well. I was really shocked by it and very pleased by it. And it taught me a good lesson about fear and it taught me a good lesson about myself and my own talent. And so um, a month later, Bandcamp did it again. My brother's like, you should just release the whole thing. I said, really? Fear creeped back up, but I have a whole thing about fear. I talk about fear a lot now. I'm telling people, you know, about the mirage of fear that's right there before you reach your greatness, that you're going to have your biggest fear before right. you have your biggest great, your biggest great accomplishment. Like, talk go through them. the fear. Talk to them. Right. But so I was like, oh my God, am I going to do this? Sure enough. I went ahead and did it, and here we are, 32 weeks later, you know, number one on band camp for modern jazz. So that's that. I did, you know, I didn't go into the the TV and all that kind of stuff yet, but I can. Let me know what you want me to do. No, no hey, listen, uh, like I said, this is this is to spotlight you and everything that you you've accomplished. So if you could think of a clever way to bring it back in, bring it back in. If you want to well, talk about it, talk about it. Please, let's 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 talk about it. Well, um. I, I was just on season two of American Soul on okay. BET, which American Soul is the um, depiction of Soul Train um, told by 
pretty much dining, right? Right. And uh, I love America. So I was a big fan of America Soul season one. And so um, as, as, as God would have it, I play in an all African-American orchestra here called Orchestra Noir. And I had left practice and I had um, gotten home and one of my um, bandmates had hit me up and was like, Tiff, shoot you this thing real quick. They're looking for an African-American female trumpet player to play this part. I was like, check, check, check. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll put in for it, put in for it that night. Sent them my little video. So they hit me up. If they didn't hit me up that night, I think they hit me up that night. If not, they hit me up that morning. I'm almost positive they hit me up that night and said, hey, we like you. We want you to come in, blah, blah. The rest was history. They um, booked me for it. Three great days. Um, DC Young Fly. I, I, I played Sly and the Family Stone. I played Cynthia Robinson, who female trumpet player, co-founder of Sly and the Family Stone, brilliant musician, arranger. Um, and, uh, you know, her and Sly had a kid, um, and, um, uh, DC Young Fly played Sly and the Family Stone. So just w one of the things too around doing your purpose is, you know, God just opens doors that you're not even expecting to be open in order for you to be able to, you know, uh, 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 glow, I guess, in, in, in what you're doing, being right. promised what you're doing. So that was another thing that I did. And, um, let me see, I think that's it. That's awesome. First of all, it's awesome. And actually you have a comment from, uh, a viewer from sticks, from sticks. I didn't want to say it. I was just, I wanted you to see it. You were an amazing person in office. Uh, and you all the success that continues to come your way. I agree. Six. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Come on, Hampton family coming through. Exactly. And funny thing, like I, I met Sticks at Florida and at band camp. I don't want to say that out, out, out loud, but what? Uh, yeah, before I before I met y'all, I met her at uh at uh Florida and at band camp. And I'm not uh, shocked. A lot of Georgia, um, especially Georgia. I'm not shocked from sticks because a lot of Georgia kids go to FAMU's band camp. This is what I found out since I've lived here. Yeah. Her actually in uh I'm not sure if you remember Rakiri. Uh yeah. yeah. Rakiri. I met Rakiri uh there too. 94, I think. 94. Crazy. Yeah. You know, funny how boop, 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 you know, life does that. But yeah. nonetheless, back to you. Those accolades are amazing. Like, first of all, I mean, you know, to be able to uh talk about your, your story and, 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 you know, what got you to where you are. Uh, even the fact that, you know, the, the, the American soul thing that like, like, I didn't even know that. And yeah, I, I season two, so, episode four, check it out. It's season fun. Two, episode four. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it this week. Cause uh, yeah. I'm off this week. So we lit. <laughs> yeah, check it out. Awesome. Let me ask you this though. Yes, sir. What is the ethnomusicologist though? So ethnomusicologist is a person who studies music and culture. So um, I've always been, I've never really done a traditional music major, right? Mm -hmm. Music engineering technology, undergrad. I was still, I, I love to learn. I'm a Sag, I'm a lifelong. Hey! Are you, what, what's your birthday? December 19th. I'm 17, shut up. We you right better get out of here, man. That's why you want to be right now. You better get out of here. Bam. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, lifelong learner, you know, I love, I could be in anybody's classroom at any time. I love to learn. Tell me something. I'm like, Whoop. so I wanted to go back to school, but I didn't, uh, and I wanted to study, I did want to study music, um, something more about music. And so I ran across ethnomusicology mm -hmm. and not too many schools have it. Liberty has it. Um, uh, um, Emory university here has it. Um, mm -hmm. some other places have it too, but um, and it's, like I said, study of culture, I mean, music and culture and how music really developed within a culture. So we studied everywhere. We studied China. We studied um, Africa. We studied America. We studied Germany. We studied Switzerland. Mm -hmm. um, just all types of areas, um, very um, indigenous cultures and really looking at how did music flourish? What what role does music play in that culture? Um, what are, are, the, are the traditions now in that culture? Like what is what has maintained, what has um, evolved? Um, and for instance, like you look at certain African cultures and a certain African cultures, like, you know, you grow up a drummer. That's what mm -hmm. your family is. And that lineage is passed down 
Like you, you don't, you're not going to be a cook. You are the drummer, and, and in certain cultures, that drummer is the the storyteller of for the for the for the history of that tribe. Sometimes mm -hmm. it is just you know a a entertainment thing or whatever. You know, you are the person that when you know something's happening, you come and do your thing. Um, but you know, it just takes on different things depending upon where you are, what the culture is, all of that good stuff. And then it's interesting to see how you know, an instrument that's built in China also is built in Africa, almost at a very similar time frame. You're like, how interesting is it that, you know, people are having similar thoughts or putting similar things together at the same right. time? You right. know, of course, sometimes they, you know, uh, somebody has traveled and they've taken their instrument and they just happen to see it and then they replicate it or whatever. But very different things, different modalities, how they use their music and the modalities. Um, uh, is really interesting. And one of the things, reasons why I wanted to do ethnomusicology is because I'm a firm believer that music is a, a, a great uniter. I believe that music transcends all, all barriers um, and that it's something that just brings people together. Like, you know, you put the right song on, I don't care who you are. I don't care who you voted for. I don't care, you know, what, what, your, what your religion is. Right. You know, I mean, people are going to come together and they're going to bop to this song, you know what I mean? And then, you know, they're not going to be thinking about everything else. So I believe music is a great uniter, period. So uh, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to do it, too. But that's what it is, a study of music and culture. No, it's awesome. I, I think, you know, um, it'd be an interesting thing to, to, to pursue. I, I've, I've literally never heard of that. I mean, and I think I, it's interesting. I, I kind of want to do some research on that. So Look it up. It's that's good. good. And you, you, I posted books on Facebook back in the day when I was doing it, and people would say, "Where are you get these books from? What is that?" And it's like I'm taking ethnomusicology, and you get these dope books, and you're reading about these dope, you know, just just different cultures, and you know, from being a music, you know, major, you know, of course now you're kind of back in the, you know, listening room, listening though to these other cultures' songs and their whatever, you know. Thank God we don't have drop the needle test because. That was no fun, but <laughs> but you do have to you know listen to them and understand them and you know even write some theory. Sometimes you have to write the music out. Like it it, it gets a little intense. I, I'm still 15 credit hours away from finishing. I'll be honest okay. on that one, but hope to do that soon. I have to actually travel. My um my work is on uh, reggae music, which is a, a love of mine, and so I have to go travel to Jamaica before I can finish this. Um, finish my master's in ethnomusicology. So, so, okay, COVID, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Indeed. Well, listen, all of that is fascinating. It's definitely fascinating. And you've done a tremendous amount of work. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to collect my bearings and know how to proceed to go forward. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess we'll talk, we'll talk about your, uh, your current projects. Now you said that you, you released your, your new album. And, uh, you know, you have uh, singles that are, you know, that are uh, have come from that album. Mm -hmm. Being that you experienced so much uh, uh, nervousness and yeah. releasing it. And like you said, 32 to 33, 34 weeks later. Yeah. What's your thought process on it now? Like having released it. I mean, I know you already kind of kind of touched on it, but like literally. What, what is your thoughts like right now? Like, at, like, where do you stand with your project? Are you. Are, are you in uh, promo mode, like to, to really try to push it as far as you can? Are you really trying to look towards a new project? Like, yep. what's your thoughts? Oh, but, but yeah, um, my thoughts right now are, um, I'm, I'm still in promo mode. I, I, I will uh, be in promo mode maybe forever. And it's, it's, my brother is a spoken word artist, very successful spoken word artist. And, um, and he really taught me about promotion. And he's dope at it. And so he was like, no, no, you got to promote. You got to promote every day. Yeah. And you got to, you know, you got to push it, you know. Right. And even um, I did a, I did two songs with a soul roar on the album. I did uh, Forward Movement and Movement One, two of my favorite songs. Matter of fact, I mean, I love the whole thing. The whole thing is my baby. I just, you know. But um, I remember her asking me at one point, like, so, like, are you going to just keep pushing it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to push this sucker all day. I'm going I'm to wheel this sucker around all day. But, yeah. So I'm still promoting it, it, and it and it still does, you know, pretty well. Um, 
still gets really good hits. Um, it's on everything. So it still gets good hits on Spotify. It still gets good hits on um, Apple Music and things like that. Um, and so that's good. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I still, I think my favorite part of it is when people hit me up to talk about the music to me, to tell me how much it moved them or how they start their day with it every day or how during COVID time in particular, it was what they went to to listen to, to keep them calm and to give them like, you know, some peace during the day. Those things right there are like irreplaceable to me. Like, I'm like, wow, like whenever that happens, that makes me feel so thankful and grateful for the gift that God gave me, which I didn't always believe in, right? Um, Didn't always believe that it was a gift that people wanted to hear or that I should share. Um, uh, So when people tell me that now, I'm like, oh, wow, you know, how thankful I am that my brother said to me, put the album out, that I listened to him and to God and said, okay, I will. And now how many people have reached out to me to tell me through me doing this, um, how motivated they are to pursue their own passions and to go back to things that they put down, that they, you know, I I always tell people, God gave me a vision at 10 years old of what he wanted me to do and what he wanted me to be. And it took me many years later, we won't date ourselves too much, but it (laughs) took me many years later to actually obey the voice that he, you know, what he told me then and actually put an action. It was almost as if he was like, I just let you go that long route because you really, really wanted to. But like, you know, here, I've been telling you this the whole time. So anyway, I digress. Um, (laughs) So yeah, so I'm promoting that. I'm working on my second one. I actually was working on it before we got on today. I was like, let me go put some clothes on because I got this interview. But because as you know, once you get into creative process, I was in, I was Mm -hmm. off. You know, listen to my songs, or whatever. But I, I plan to um, release this one before Christmas. Um, I've been working on it for a minute now. I'm excited about it. Actually, it's gonna be it's it's beautiful. A lot of people compare my music to film music, which is correct because I, you know, I have a, a professional certification from uh, Berkeley College of Music in uh, composing music for film and television, mm-hmm. and I always have heard music like a like a scene like when i see when i hear music i see scenes when i see scenes i hear music Mm -hmm. so um so i've always it's always processed like that for me so when people tell me man when i hear your music it um reminds me of movies i was like that's exactly as it should like that lets me know that I've hit the nail on the head because that's what I want you to do. When I when you hear my music, I want you to see a visual. I want you to get lost in it. I want you to, you know, go into your own recesses of your mind and, and it pull forward things and ideas and 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 for you. I want you to get, you know, totally ra- enraptured by it. Because mm-hmm. that's what happens to me. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> you know, I get into it and I'm like, I'm gone. You know, I'm all the way gone in my own thoughts. So I love it when people tell me that that is what has been achieved with them. So I'm promoting my old album. I'm about to start promoting my new album and, you know, and starting to put the things in place, you know, for that one as well. So I'm excited about it. And you know, a lot of people are hitting me up to do some collabos. Like I told you, I just came from L.A. and um, doing some collaborations there. And um, some people have hit me up about doing some things here. And um, I did a... I'm doing, I did an artist endorsement deal with Phaeton Trumpets. So that's been beautiful. Um, Just doing a lot of little things and, you know, letting God do his work. You know, honestly, the beautiful part about it is to sit back, be in alignment with what God has for you and sit back and watch him work. Right. And just be like, okay, then let me find out. (laughs) Then if I was just in alignment, things would be easier. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Not saying that you would have all that, you know, I worked in a corporate job for 15 years. So I was making bank at that point. So not that I'm making that at this point, I was coming, mm-hmm. but knowing that, you know, but I have more peace of mind. One, I'm no longer crying in a parking lot before I have to walk into a corporate job. 
So I have peace of mind. And um, and I, I, I love what I do every day. I love waking up every day and doing it. And I love impacting people in the way that I'm impacting people. So care of projects. <laughs> They're yeah, awesome. Hey, listen, I, I love it. I love it. it, it it's like if 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 you have so much that 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 you you know you want to present and that it, that it just keeps you uh, you know talking about it, then that means you you're hella busy. And it's it's you know, hey, listen, I, I'm gonna step back and let you take the wheel. You know? <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's my current project. That's it. That's what I got going on right now. And you know, we'll see what else comes from it. You know, but that's what I'm doing right now. Well, interestingly enough, we have. We have uh, some of your some of your music, so we kind of want to go through uh, yeah uh, through them. And uh, the first one I want to go through is a uh, uh, Ford Ford Progress, right? Ford Ford, Ford Movement. Ford this Movement. Was, this was I the first that. single. Mm -hmm. First single. So, uh, please bring in your 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 your, your single. You so told this is Forward Movement. Um, this features Masora. I talked about uh, Planet Venus, dope piano player. Um, this song was inspired by Miles Davis's All Blues, and so you can tell it by its cyclical nature in the song. And um, it was one of the last songs I did, one of the first songs I released, and I love her. So, without further ado, awesome. And did you do you, you did all of the production yourself? I did all the production myself. I mixed it, and mastered it myself. Everything is moi. Awesome. Here we go. Or movement. Yes, forward movement. Forward movement. You feel it? It it just it, it just put me in a good little place. Like <laughs> I love that. Song. Organically, organically, I just you know, whew, you know <laughs> I, I just gotta sit there. I, I can ride. I can ride to Vegas on that right there. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> yes, you know, and it gives you it's, you know it's cyclical. You know, it makes you feel like hey, yeah, 
You know, I mean, it does. It feels like a road trip, like anything. To me, it's progression. And it's all about moving forward. Just, you know, da, 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 da. you know, you can see somebody walking, all of that. In my mind, I see a lot of things in that. So, Indeed. Indeed. Second one we have is today is a good day. Yes. What so, you thought of that? You want to bring that in? Yeah, yeah. Today was a good day. Uh, of course, it's the album title and the um, title track from the song from the album. Um, it um, it was inspired by Ice Cube and by you know West Coast. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, I don't even know how it was really. I mean, like as far as like how did that come into fruition for my mind? Like I'm gonna do Ice Cube, but. Yeah, I was listening. I love um, Boys in the Hood. It's one of my, 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 my movies. And I think I was watching that one day. I was like, you know what? You know, today was a good day. You know what? I'm going to do something around that. And so you'll, you'll, you'll see the kind of like, um, it's, not, it's not actually uh, it was a good day that, that this takes a take on. Um, right. But you'll hear the, um, the, the, the take from the West Coast in it. And um, it became the title track. And, you know, and, and when you buy the album, it actually has like little um, descriptions for each one. For this one, you know, regardless of how your day is going, look, if you are able to, you know, breathe, provide for yourself, put some food on your table, it was a good day. You know what I mean? Don't let nothing get you down. Don't let nothing, you know, take you off your square if possible. If it does, cool. Take you a second. Jump back on. You know, be thankful for all we give thanks, you know. Right. So today was a good day. Hey, and you know, if not nothing else, man, 2020 is undefeated, but we need stuff like this to get us off of that 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 pip right there. I appreciate yeah. it. Undefeated. <laughs> undefeated is the word. Yes. <laughs> so without further ado, today was a good day. Here we go. Was a good Today day. was a good day. <laughs> you gotta be happy for it. it now, listen, I love the path that you're on, the trajectory of everything that you're doing. It, it like it, it really is uh good vibes. Mm. Like, that's the best way to put it. Um, yeah. And like I said earlier, we need more of those in 2020, and yeah. especially going into 2021, we need to go on a positive note. Yeah. And just the aesthetic of it, the feel, 
the ambiance that it, it you know it puts you in a mode yeah absolutely you know so i definitely love it and like i said so it, again we gotta we gotta touch this you produced all of this yeah 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 i produced all of this all huh you played all of this and everything played everything everything except for on movement one and on forward <laughs> movement forward movement she played the keys yeah. And on Movement One, she played the keys. But other mm -hmm. than those two songs, everything else is me. Nah, mm -hmm. it's 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 A1. A1. Mm -hmm. Just joking. Just you know, with the, but it's A1. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and it, from one producer, you know, humble producer to you know, I love it. It's amazing. It's amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. Absolutely. I'm gonna have to get a beat from you though. Come on, what are we doing? Oh no, we are gonna talk about the collab. We are gonna talk about the collab, but you know what I'm okay, saying. Okay. But that's only if you feel like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, absolutely. <laughs> so without further ado, we got the last one. Okay. Do it for the dollar. Yeah. So do it for a dollar. I had to pay homage to my home now to okay. the A. Okay. So just in general, um, today was a good day. Is a day in the life with me. If you listen to the album, it starts from morning to night from Good Morning to um, Starlight, Star Bright. And then the last song is a, it's just a paid tribute to my brother who's uh, my best friend. But it walks you through a day in the life of me. And so when we get to do it for a dollar, we in the A. So uh, we, we here get paying homage to, 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 to the whole thing, to the trap, to the strip clubs, give you a little trap beat and all that. And um, Real brief, the reason how this came about was um, once I left corporate, I went back into consulting for a couple of years and I was what they called a road warrior, which okay. means I left on Mondays and came back on Thursdays. Um, and whenever I would go into the airport to walk, I would actually listen to Beyonce, Six Inch Heels. Mm -hmm. And that song talks about, you know, a girl on her grind. But it sounds, it's very, it's very kind of strip club sounding. You know, I love you know, BB be, be doing her thing. And and that song inspired me saying, you know what, I'm going to do this song called Do It For A Dollar because whatever, you know, you're going to be on the stroll for something, okay? You got to choose what stroll you want to be on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right now I'm on the stroll for music, amen. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, but whatever you're doing it, you're doing it for a dollar. So make it something that you want to do. You know what I mean? Put, put, put your time in. When you're doing it for a dollar, make sure what you're doing for a dollar is something that you want to do. So that's Don't it that. Amen. And and so and you mentioned Beyonce. We'll revisit that as soon as this is over. With. I'm not gonna distract from your your spotlight. Okay. But we wanna wanna touch on that in a second. But without further ado, go for the dollar. Here we go. Thank you. 
the back, like. Right, right, right. I was like, you know. Hey, but do you, but the. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's. Yeah, you got oh. fire. Like, you in the fire business. You know, like. That's it. That's my I don't, don't got to work. People are like, that's, that's, that should be in a marching band. I was like, okay, then let's do marching band then. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so so sitting on sitting on uh some smoke like you sitting on, like how does that make you feel? Like for real, for real. Like you you got to be like you know I did that. Well, I, I I did that. Well, you know what? So I didn't know what I did at first. So one of the biggest lessons I learned. So this is one of the things I like to impart with people too. Success for me when I dropped this album was just in the release of the album. Mm. Once I released the album, that was success for me. That was that was that was it. Like I was like, okay, cool, we're gonna release the album. And that is was me stepping through my fear to do so. And I didn't know how people were gonna receive it at all, but just stepping through the fear to do so, I was like, will help me to do a second one. And so to me, success was just step through the fear and do it. So I didn't really even, you know, I thought I th I liked it. You know what I mean? I was like, I like it. You know, I'm working out to it. I'm walking to it like, yeah. But, you know, to to get the response truly from people that I've gotten who have loved it, I mean, absolutely loved it, um, has been humbling and it's been um, confirming and it's been such a beautiful thing for me. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, it, it allows me to say, Okay, God, I hear you. I see you. I understand. I understand that, you know, this is where I need to be placing my energy. I understand my ministry now. I understand, um, I understand what I should be doing with my time, you know, for with the bulk of my time. Um, is doing music and and truly putting my effort and my emotion and my energy towards creating things to help people. Um find peace and some relief and some joy in life, you know, through, through my music, you know, as just one of the things, but if I can, you know, help one person feel better about their day, you know, I'm like, I'm golden, you know what I mean? So that's how I feel about it. I feel really good about it. Um, I'm very humbled by it though, I must say, but very excited about the future in the same, in the same respect. I mean, and, 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 and you know, be it for me, permit me to say, uh, like you should be, you, you should, mm -hmm. you should, you should feel a good way about it. I mean, it's really good music, and it's different. It's not like, oh, well, you decided to do what everybody else do, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and, and take the, the the cop out way, mm -hmm. and you know, just kind of follow the you know follow the dog's tail, so to speak. Whereas, you you, you charting courses. You, mm. you you know you painting canvases and it's it's awesome it, it, that truly is you know what I mean um, so I definitely uh, very much appreciate it um, and like I said I mean you know I already knew what it was from 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 you know back in college I was like oh it's just the town of it so it is what it is I'm paying attention so just to see you you know see you um, fully living your truth mm. it's amazing it's amazing you know and I, I'm just humbled that you know that you that you know that I, I know you and that, you know, I'm like, hey, I can call my sister up like, yo, she, see, my sister know what she talk about over here. Like, she, um, she's there. Anytime. You know? so, I appreciate you for having me even just on, you know, the beat and, and, and using your platform to support me in this manner means so much. So I'm so appreciative of you and your support. Thank you. Thank you. Now we're going to get into the, 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 the quasi tough part of the, 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 the interview. Okay. Yeah. So. Let's start with Beyonce though. Yeah. I gotta ask you. Yeah. So since you say you love Beyonce, that's that's your lady right there. What'd you think about Black is King? Oh, I love Black is King. I love <laughs> Black is King. Okay. Um, I love Black is King. So I mean, I listen to it probably the whole album at least once a day. Mm -hmm. Like it, you know, it's my riding joint. Black is King and um Toby. Yep, in way from the day. That Toby way. from <laughs> from Houston. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's those two are my those that's what I ride out to right now. And um, but Beyonce, what I will say is, and I I've, I've always enjoyed Beyonce, but I, I wouldn't say I was a beehiver. 
Like I have right. friends who are those. And, yeah. and I might be, I might be though, I might be about to buzz on up in there because <laughs> um I, I got so much mad respect for her for what she's doing mm -hmm. um on so many levels. Mm -hmm. Um, but if I just stick to musically, I mean what she does there is uh, when you say do something different and not necessarily stick to what everybody else is doing. I think she does that. I think oh. she creates absolutely new lanes, new looks, new thoughts, and, and uses her music in such a variety of ways to tell messages, to paint pictures on canvases for sure. Yeah. Um, Black is King, the, 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 the video, the, visual. Like the, 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 the movie, the, my lord, like it's just gorgeous. It's right. gorgeously done with so many nuggets. Mm -hmm. Just put in there little golden eggs for you to look at and find something. Mm. Beyonce is doing her <laughs> thizzle. She's doing her thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Just had to you know, had to check with accomplished black women. Yeah. You know we had to run that by there and see what she thought yes. about. Yes, no, she's a real deal. I think when she first came out and she started doing her thing and started like you know branching off, I was kind of like, mm, we'll see. But no, no, she's absolutely going to go down in history as one of the greatest, and I'm I'm, I'm positive of that. You know, at, um, now like positive of that, like it's it's undeniable what you do. And the, and the definitely won't hear me argue with that. Yeah. Transition segue. Okay. What's it like? being an African-American woman, multi-platform entrepreneur, like meaning all of the accolades that you've uh, accomplished, all of the titles that you carry, everything that you have done up to this point, uh, you know, uh, for the, the pedigree, the, you know, the Berkeley School of Music, the doctor, you know what I mean? Like, the, you know, just the, the, the letters behind your name. What's it like? Doing that and pioneering that, well, not pioneering it, but championing, championing, championing it. <laughs> Thank you. I did go to college to just speak a bit of it. Right, right. What's it like? You know, it's interesting you say that because you know I never really probably thought of it that way. I think growing up in Richmond, Virginia, and um, not necessarily um, having much, you know, having enough, but not having much, you know. Um, I, I very much so wanted more, you know, um, and strove for that. Like, you know, that was my thing. You know, going to Hampton was a big reach, to be honest. Like, Hampton, I had never seen anything like it. Um, you and me both. When I got there. <laughs> you, you're right, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it was a di it's really a different world. Like, are you really like, okay. You know what I mean? People are pulling up in that joint in, with, with, like, luxury cars. And you're like, Yep, yeah, no, no, don't, no, 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 no. So, yeah. um, but I think it, it also opened my mind to the possibilities of things being at Hampton. Um, and this is why I also tell uh, anybody who will listen, man, leave your home and go somewhere else at some point in your life, whether it's college, if you don't go to college, just go at some point, just go live somewhere else and see something different, just so you can open your mind to the possibilities of what's out there for you. Anyway, right. um, I think for me, that opening my mind made me say, okay, I'm, I want to do certain things. Like I wanted to be in business. So doing Turner Broadcasting, I'm going back, I got my MBA from Clark Atlanta um, and did uh, strategic planning and marketing and communications for um, the CTO of the company uh, for Turner Broadcasting for many, many years. And, um, and I wanted to be that as well and you know the other thing is that you know you live many lifetimes in this lifetime like you can be a lot of different things you don't have to you know have one goal my son is 14 you know he wants to be an nba player but he also wants to do audio engineering you know he also wants to do and i'm like you can do it all like go do nba then go do audio engineering like the, it, the, you don't have to be this one thing so yeah i think you know being exposed to the different things allows you to say yeah yeah, I'm going to be all of those things. I'm going to have my MBA and do strategic planning. And, you know, I used to travel to London a lot back in those times. And I used to go stay in castles and stuff. What? Little girl from Richmond, Virginia is going to stand in these castles? Wow. R ridiculous, right? 
And yeah. then, you know, now here I am doing music and doing the thing that I love to do that who knew I would come full circle back to music being my core. There, there are people in my life now who didn't know I did music because I was in corporate and it wasn't my main thing. They're like, you do music? <laughs> Shut up. And I'm like, yeah, I always did it. <laughs> so I think, I think, you know, women are designed to be multitaskers. We're designed mm. to wear many hats. We live that life. You know, I think God made us that way because we you know we're mothers and we, you know, we do so many things, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, I'm just pleased that uh, I'm able to do it. And I'm pleased that um, hopefully some young person, male or female, will see it and say, that's pretty daggone cool. You know what? I think I'm going to do something like that, too. If mm-hmm. she can do it, I can do it. So hopefully somebody from Richmond, Virginia. I spoke to my high school the other week, some kids from there. And I'm, I'm, you know, my prayer is that, you know, somebody, you know, sees what I'm doing and inspires somebody to say, I'm going to do something like that, too. Or or I can achieve my dream, too. Whatever that is, you know, what I mean, I, it, I'm, I'm going to reach out for that, too. So, yeah. Well, like I said, you started you started with a you know like a humble dude like me in in college. So I mean, you know, it's already it's the gift is already keep giving. You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's totally awesome, totally awesome. Thank you. Um, next question. Yeah. How is Atlanta post presidential elections? Atlanta post presidential election was the same as Atlanta. Pre-presidential election. I don't think Atlanta has changed. Atlanta is Atlanta, so people get confused between Atlanta and Georgia. So Atlanta <laughs> is Atlanta. Atlanta is, you know, you know, Chocolate City Part Two. You know, what I mean, it is, you know, uh, you know, culture, history. It is dripping of melanin. It is a beautiful place to come and prosper and do what you do. Um, you know. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, legacy is not lost on this city. Um, mm-hmm. All of those things still stay and stand strong and true. So whenever we lose an election, it's not because of Atlanta. When I say we, I mean Democrats or, you know, if you're voting Democrat, it's not because of Atlanta. Atlanta's going to go Democrat. What's not going to go Democrat is Georgia most of the time. So the fact that Georgia turned blue is unprecedented. you like, you know, I didn't think it was going to happen. When it was like, oh, Georgia may turn blue. I said, Psh, <laughs> not going to turn blue. Y'all, have you been outside of Atlanta? Okay, right. Georgia's not going to turn blue. But um, it speaks to, I mean, it really speaks to the um, tone of where we are as a country that Georgia turned blue. Um Cause you know, we ain't just a good old boy. I mean, we, we, <laughs> it ain't that, it's not that type of story. You know what yeah. I mean? So, but, but post um, election, Atlanta's still, you know, doing what it do. You know what I mean? Atlanta, you know, even COVID, you didn't stop Atlanta. Atlanta been, Atlanta been doing what it do, period. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Atlanta's, Atlanta's been like COVID what? COVID who? Oh, right. we don't know no COVID over here. So, you know, Atlanta just does what it does. So post-election, it's been great. There's no, no, really no no big change, though, because Atlanta's been crunk. Atlanta's been on, on that vibe. You know what I mean? So not a big change. Okay. Okay. Well, good to know. And I just want to personally thank the state of state of uh, Georgia coming through because y'all came through. And America was, we was, we was. We had to take the glasses off for for, for, for Georgia right quick because we was like, bro, I don't know what y'all doing. Y'all playing down there. This could be us, but y'all faking. But y'all came through. Y'all I came was shocked. Through. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I I had no thought that Atlanta was gonna turn blue. I was like, oh no, Atlanta's going for Trump. That's why Trump is hurt by that. Trump is like, what? If Georgia didn't go, and I Atlanta, yeah. Georgia. I was like, George. He's like, Georgia didn't go. Yeah, it's fake news. It's wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> Damn, thus we're on our third recount. <laughs> bro, you lost. You lost yeah. it, bro. Yeah, he needed to just go ahead and do that. That's how yeah. it's going. Third recount, bro. You know, I, what did he say? I don't know. That's the best way I can put it. 
But nonetheless, uh, winding down on this uh, with uh, closing out, any advice for aspiring talent, anybody that's aspiring to be, you know, uh, the, the, uh, um, the music, you know, uh, that, what is the ethnomusicologist, uh, actress or actor or uh, musician, trumpet player, um, aspiring brass D, er, you know. Brass D? Had to throw it up in there. Had to throw it up yeah. in there. Come on now, Brass D, come through. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, my advice would be let them use ya. Okay, but seriously, it is that. But it is, um, <laughs> it is, uh, yeah, follow your passion, man. Let, look, you're going to have a lot of little voices in your head telling you, you know, you're not good enough. What are you doing? All of that kind of stuff. And you know what I mean? And, you know, you're going to have the other voice in your head telling you, you know, you can do it. All right. You got to shut up the naysayer voice and you got to tune out a lot of times other people and do your work, do the work you're supposed to do, put in your time, you know, work hard at it, learn what you need to learn, all that good stuff. Um, but several things I've learned in this process. One is that you don't have to be a cookie cutter of nobody. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think one of the things that prevented me from going before is that, you know, you know, I, I'm, I, I have my own sound and it's always been this way. And, you know, I'm not going to, you ain't going to hear me doing, but so much, but you're not going to hear me doing all that. Right. I love to hear it though. You know, from people, it's just not who I am, you know? And, and for a while I felt like, you know, maybe I should be doing that. You know what I mean? But no, like every person has an audience for what they do. This is what is true. Indeed. And so if you do your thing, your audience will find you and they'll be like, oh, this, I love what you do. And that's all you're looking for. That's the only thing you look for is your audience. And so if whether or not you're going to be doing acting or music or being an ethnomusicologist and doing all the education in the world, which is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, um, whatever you're pursuing, yeah, just go inward. Stay connected to, to to spirit and allow that time to 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 let it speak to you to to say, hey, yeah, you're on the right path. Keep pursuing, keep putting one foot in front of the other, play forward, moving if you need to, and keep moving forward towards your dream and it will manifest. I tell everyone, God placed a seed in every single person of what they're to do on this earth, if not multiple seeds. Right. And if you honor that seed, then it will provide for you. All you got to do is honor it. Best words I've heard all year. <laughs> 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 yeah. So uh, lastly, the last question I have is how can people learn more about you? You can learn more about me by going to my website, which is www.goodstuff. Good with the E, my last name, G-O-O-D-E-S-T-U-F-F dot net. Okay. And that gives you pretty much like all my information on how to contact me. Uh, you could, you know, join my email list and um, keep up with me, what, what's going on. Um, my Instagram, which I'm on daily, which is at Life's Good, L-I-F-E-S-G-O-O-D-E. Um, and I'm on that daily, uh, and, you know, keep up with whatever I'm doing, flying, whatever craziness I'm into. I'm also, I also do a lot of inspirational words. This has really put me in a place of doing testimonies, if you will, which I think testimonials are missing in church. I feel like they should be back, but that's a different word for a different day. Um, <laughs> uh, but you'll, you know, see me doing a lot of thoughts about, the kind of stuff I'm saying right now about the seeds and all of that, like things like that. I do stuff like that pretty much daily. Um, Twitter, same thing at life's good. Um, you can catch me there. Facebook for, for, for people my age, so you know, grown and sexy on Facebook. Uh, you can find me at Tiffany good, just the regular old name. Um, and for, if you want to purchase today was a good day. Definitely you could do band camp. I love band camp because you get the most money from band camp. Amen. Thank you, band camp. Um, but I'm on every streaming platform, knowing the man. If you want, if you 
looking for it and you got it is there so i'm on um itunes amazon um uh spotify um what's jay-z and beyonce's joint title on title i'm on <laughs> i'm on napster i didn't even know napster still existed until still exist. I, I was on it you know <laughs> i was like napster they're still out there yeah so yeah i'm on it all so if you're looking for it it's on there so yeah please you know pick it up listen to it let me know what you think you can hit me up at tiffanygood at gmail.com let me know your thoughts i would love to hear them Great, and I encourage you to do so. Tiffany, like I said, Tiffany is a very warm and 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 cool and humble individual, and uh, I'm sure that she would accept whatever uh, uh, comments that you have. Uh, in fact, speaking of which, we we got you know, that sticks again. <laughs> I love sticks. Thank you for joining and sticking with us. Loving, loving your You know what thank I mean? Thank you. Oh, wow, thank you. So, you know, these are these are just all of this is for you. You know what I mean? Like what you got going on, people are loving it. And just all I can say is just keep continuing. Keep blessing, blessing uh, everybody with all, all of the, 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 the spirit and energy that you're putting out in the universe. It's definitely well received. Um, like I said, I want to take the opportunity to thank you for uh, joining us on the beat. Uh, definitely one of the more memorable interviews. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, look. <laughs> if any, if I could be of any kind of assistance going forward, just let me know. You know how to reach me now, uh, if you didn't already. And I need a beat. Know. Give me a beat. What's man, up? man, listen, don't even put that on the plate, man. We about to get lit, bro. It's about to be crunking here. Nah. <laughs> nah, but I got you. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll talk about that going forward for sure. I definitely would love to collaborate. I definitely actually would try to see, uh, collaborate with you. Uh, Dre King, too. Dre, yes. I, was just, I just had him on another podcast uh, like two or three weeks ago. Matter of fact, if you're interested, I might pull you in on that that other one as well, too. It's another Hampton alum uh, that I do a uh, podcast with as well. And we, we it's more of a roundtable talking about politics and, and all types of other stuff. But I, it'd be interesting to get your perspective on that. Let's do it. I'm with it. Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. love how you get down. Yeah. <laughs> well, without further ado, like I said, thank you for your time, Tiff. Yeah. Uh, and we we will definitely be in touch. And without further ado, we about to get to the to the out. But do you have any uh, shout outs or anybody that you want you know uh, say what's up to before we we dip? I love my son Joshua Good and my mommy Barbara Good and my brother John Good. Shout out to Hampton University to the Marching Force. Hey. Brass D to all of the, I won't call them all out, you know what I mean? You ain't got to do all that. <laughs> Sigma Data Sorority Incorporated, of course, always that. But yeah, to everybody, um, to, to all the people who I have been blessed to spend time with and who have spent time with me, who have poured into me and allowed me to share energy with them, I'm very appreciative because each person that I have interacted with has helped me to grow as a person and I wouldn't be who I am without them. So very appreciative. All right, Tiff. Well, again, this is Donnie B. Got the Beats. We live on the beat, and I'm here with my sis, Tiffany Good. Make sure you have a good day, and uh, stay loved, stay blessed, and stay safe in this pandemic. All right? We out. We out, Donnie B.